Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. Happy New Year. Today, we're going to be doing a recap of 2023, everything Drinks with Johnny. We're also probably going to get a little bit into AEW's wrestling and, and uh, uh, World's End that happened over the weekend, uh, Christmas, all those things. I'm joined today by my two co-hosts, Sam the Hawk Hawkins, Brando, Brandon Lombardo, and uh, how the hell are you guys doing it? Happy 2024. Tired. Happy 2024. Yeah, it's great. You're tired. Awesome. That's, that's how you're going to start the fucking podcast? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> Dude, this is funny because I'm going back to our group chat where I told you motherfuckers yesterday I would have been terrible. I would have looked like and felt like Sam. I feel great today. <laughs> Did you just do nothing last night? Yeah, I didn't even go out, man. I just chilled on the couch. I fell asleep like five times before New Year's. Nice. But you, you went out before. What did you do before? The day before. Yeah, the day before we had our annual Christmas party. Oh. A, a week later than usual. We usually celebrate it on Festivus. 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 What, what day is Festivus? It's the 23rd. Ah. Mm-hmm. ah that's good. Yeah. Festivus for the rest of us. Yeah. So we, we I'm kind of surprised that you didn't do anything because you were already messed up from that holiday party that you mentioned. So who? Dude, I, wait, wait, wait. First of all, yeah. you celebrate Festivus. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. Who's more the rest of us? Tell us. <laughs> Who's the rest Who's of us? Just, dude, Who's everyone, I, dude? No one knows who the fuck you're talking about. Of course, they're not going to know either. Like, it's Shania? <laughs> is, is Shania there? What do you mean? <laughs> Was Shania yeah. there? They know Shania. Yeah, Sean, Shania is a co-host of the party with me every year. Basically, we just go on Facebook and make an event and invite fucking everyone. And whoever shows Facebook. up, shows up. Mm-hmm. Um, this year it was BYOB. We had it at a bar that was shut down. So, kind of worked. Free space. Um, we're not bad. Everyone brings it's not food. The bar I w- it's not the bar I went to with you when I was there? No. No, no, okay. no. That we had still, it there that last year. That one's still popping? We had it there the year before. Yeah, it's still okay. still popping. <laughs> still popping. <laughs> I saw you on the dance floor there. It was crazy. Yeah, dude. I was the only one. Shawnee with DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only one on the dance floor. <laughs> Fuck, man. So good. Oh, shit, man. Well, I'm so glad to be here with you guys today to... How was yours? Go back and what like, did you do? Recap. Yeah. Uh, well, so I was supposed to go out to Palm Desert with uh, uh, some friends, um, and on the day after Christmas, I woke up with a really bad flu, and I was mm. out for like three days. We were texting each other, but um, like I couldn't get out of bed, not because for any other reason that I couldn't stay awake. Like every two hours, I was falling back asleep and stuff. So. Oh, damn. Yeah, it was it was pretty brutal. It was a bad flu. I I tested for COVID. Everybody, it wasn't COVID, but like, it was it was pretty funny. Um, but by Friday, I started to feel okay. But I didn't want to be. A, there was a group of us going. I didn't want to be around everybody and fuck everybody up. And and I wasn't sure that I would eat, like. We had like golf and hiking plan. I'm like, I'm not sure I can do all that. So we didn't end up, we didn't end up doing that. We just ended ended up staying in the neighborhood with some uh, some friends and that have young kids too. And we ring in the new year at uh, 9 PM uh, <laughs> Pacific time so that <laughs> the kids can make it. Um, nice. It was, it was, it was really mellow, but it was a lot of fun. We, we played this new uh, gambling game that I love this new card game. It's fantastic. I'll, Is it gambling or a card more. game? <laughs> it's a card game, but you just made a gambling. Yeah. Well, no, one of our neighbors did. Shout out to Chris Habrell because that that thing is like it's sick. Like it's a great game. I learned it uh, at a Christmas party. You just put it's super simple. You just put up like nine cards face up, and you the general gist of it. There's more to it, but the general gist of it is you pick one of the cards and you go higher or lower. And if you're if you wrong, you're out. And then the last person gets the pot of money. Everyone buys in for whatever you like. Sometimes yeah. we play for five. Sometimes we play for twenties. Last night we yeah. played for ones because the kids were playing too. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, there's nothing like getting kids into gambling. It's it's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. Frankie's hooked. Frankie is fucking hooked. I'm, we, I'm I'm starting to question that that second house in in Vegas that I've been thinking about. Fuck, man. Mm. Sam, what did you do for New Year's? Uh, we usually have a party. We had hosted Christmas and stuff this year, so we're like. We went low key, just had some friends over. Uh, but one of our friends, Johnny knows, uh, Mitch and Nicole have a like a one year old. So we put him upstairs at a certain time to go to sleep so they could hang out. But because of that, the neighborhood, our kids and our neighborhood kids, we said, ah, oh, you can't go upstairs. So our, my son told us today, 
that we basically ruined New Year's for him because he couldn't do shit and it was boring <laughs> and it sucked. And I was like, well, you were at your friend's house and you're playing with the same exact friends. He goes, yeah, but the plan was to have it here. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. Uh, you screwed up, dude. I was yeah. waiting for the he invite. Was that Frankie I, was... Hey, dude, last year we went to your house, and I was waiting for the invite, and then you're like, oh, we're going to Mario's and not doing anything. I was like, well, fuck. <laughs> so you still flaked on it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I flaked on it either way, but I wasn't uh, no, sure I was going to be able to do anything this year. Yeah, I know. We, we, it was just mellow. Uh, but my son was bummed Frankie wasn't there because he got a AEW ring and... Uh, wrestlers and he was excited whoa, whoa, whoa. they make an AEW ring now yeah it was it was yeah. made and discontinued i bought the, i bought the the old one that was in a package on ebay oh, and, and it's no offense to you but he was talking shit about frankie's ring he goes yeah we do aew wrestling but it's on a wwe you know ring <laughs> which is not the same you know and i was like okay noted that that <laughs> is true but i mean i didn't know I, every time i go to this they're not in the store near here no, anyway. no so you have to order no. it online i guess okay well yeah, yeah. everyone go to aew.com to find your aew official uh ring yeah. but i'm glad you brought that up because we could go right into that there first, you go. and then we can recap yeah. because as you guys know we've been on a thread talking about this AE, you did you end up watching it, Sam? No, I didn't. I was gonna watch it today, but we did this instead. So ah, you fucking piece. Well, I was like kind of like you're about to get a bunch of spoilers. You're about to get a bunch of spoilers. So uh, basically, World's End happens in New York and uh, pay per view, as everyone knows here by now. Big wrestling fan here. We're all big wrestling fans. Friends of the show are in AEW and stuff, and. I'm watching it, man. It was a great showing. I was not expecting a lot, to be honest. If I'm being completely honest, it felt like some of the matches were didn't have a lot of build up um, yeah. on the TV shows, and then, but I think what they ended up doing, Brandon, you correct me if I'm wrong. Like sometimes they do this; they use the pay per view to start the uh, storyline rather than to finish it. And I feel like a lot of those kind of happened over the weekend. Yeah, what, what, yeah, what I think, think so for sure. I think so for sure. I I didn't catch the whole thing. I just caught bits and pieces of it. But from what I saw, dude, awesome show. Like seriously, I mean, it was great. I mean, I watched the whole thing. I was upstairs again, still making sure I was I was I wasn't sick and everything, like keeping it mellow. But I had uh, you know me, Frankie, and I had all three TVs with different things on upstairs. I had AEW on the main screen. I had the Lakers game on a, on another screen, and then I had the Dallas uh, uh, Detroit game on another screen. So it was like a it was like a sports bar setting. And I was like, "This is fucking pretty cool." Uh, but yeah, it was it was it was fun. And uh, dude, there were so many great matches. Like like going to, seeing uh, Christian Cage and Adam Copeland, yeah, in the ring together again, giving it their all. Like yeah, it wasn't. It, it was not like. They weren't holding anything, dude. They were like, this is our time to remind motherfuckers who we are. And it was like, oh, shit. They're fucking legit, dude. Like, the when the ladder came out, I was like, let's go. Like, And then they did the fire on the table. The, oh, yeah, the yeah. lighted. Oh, they did all the... They did everything that my member berries wanted. wanted you know? Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent, dude. It was I sick, mean, that, that was a cool callback from uh, Adam Copeland to his match with Mick Foley from WrestleMania. Right. I don't know if you remember that, but um, same, yeah. same spot, like put him through the flaming table. He wore the same attire. He wore the same ring attire that he wore to that WrestleMania. I didn't catch that. Yeah. So it's like, Sick. okay, that's, that's pretty fucking. By cool. the way, I did. What I did notice though is homeboy looks jacked. Yeah. Copeland, like, like even like when he came back to WWE, like it was like, whoa, dude, like he's 40 and he still looks like he looks better than he ever has, but it looks like he even put on more muscle now. Like, I was like, dude, dude looks jacked. Hell yeah. I, it was a great match, though. It was a fucking great match. It, it was, was, dude, it was awesome. Like, Nick Wayne took that fucking table spot, bro. He, like, landed on his head. That was awesome. Yeah, you know, I when when Darby told me about Nick, like, before, he's like, no, the, the kid's legit and stuff. I was like, okay, yeah. okay. And then, like, the little spots that I've seen him in and stuff, I'm like, uh, if Darby's giving him the, the thumbs yeah. up, like, he's he's legit, dude. You should go watch some of his old stuff from like GCW and like the Indies. He's oh, yeah. he's legit, man. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Now, well, I mean, he comes from a you know comes from the family, you know. So, but that's fucking that match was sick. Um, what did you think about uh, Eddie Kingston and John Moxley 
didn't see it. I saw some spots. But I saw some fucking hard hits, which is awesome. Dude. Like, <laughs> it was what, what you, you wanted out of that match. It was yeah, exactly yeah. what you wanted out of that match. You knew it was just going to be, I mean, Strong the, style. it was yeah. the chops. Yeah. For I mean, it was half the match. It felt like was just them chopping each other down. It was like fuck. I was like, dude, this is gnarly. It well, was, that's, it that's was, what it should have been, man. I mean, yeah. look at the titles that were defended there too, right? So like, you're you're getting some of the new Japan style wrestling into it. Both oh, of those totally guys was. big in Japan. So like, it's yeah, it makes a lot of sense that you see that in the match. And from what I saw, dude, some fucking hard hits. Like Kingston's no. a beast. Well, style wise, yeah. they're exactly the same. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And that's why they make they make they make a great match together. I thought that yeah. I thought it was I thought it was really, you know, for a lot of people, um, maybe in America that are looking for more of like the mainstream wrestling. I could see because I've seen some comments and stuff, and and I could see where they're like not really getting it. But like, dude, now that I'm like really into wrestling and knowing you, Brando, and knowing that there's other styles of wrestling, I'm like that was done really well. Like, yeah. For that style. It was a great yeah. match. Completely agree, man. And, and then, of course, nice. we got to know who the fucking devil is. Oh, oh dude. Hold yeah. up. You're going to you're gonna skip over fucking Swerve. And, uh, and oh, yeah. Austin. I can't skip. You're right. I can't skip over Swerve. Dude. How'd that go? That was sick. So, like, I even when I turned on the pay-per-view, I didn't know Keith Lee was going to be, like, wasn't going to be there. Um, and mm. I still don't know. Brandon, do you know why that why that happened? I oh, just he saw, did, yeah, they like, didn't wrestle? No, Keith no. Lee didn't. He had like an injury. He didn't get cleared. It's oh no! Saw. That's what they said. I wasn't sure if that was like, yeah, I don't know, work or not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure like what the actual reasoning is, or if that was it or not. But for Dustin to come in, just be like, all right, cool. I was wondering why Dustin was there. I didn't. I didn't catch that that he was. That's why he replaced it. Oh. Dude, that well, it actually works wrestling. with the storyline too because like it's his partner. You, it's his partner, so it make, yeah. it makes perfect sense too. But like, good for him to come in and have a fucking pay per view quality match this is like what his fourth decade of wrestling but the dude nuts, is man. amazing the dude yeah. is seriously amazing and it was he's, he's i mean probably in the, the, the story they told in the ring so again because he's coming in to your point he's coming in blindly for most people right right on a pay-per-view against swerve who's one of the uh, hottest guys right now dude his like, last pay-per-view was bonkers i mean yeah coming in hot dude, off swerve that. is on is on the is on the come up like we saw it when we Two years ago when he was in Vegas, I, I was not, it was not hyperbole when I told him, I'm like, you're a fucking star, like straight yeah, yeah. up. You feel and it. Uh, and it, it, it's starting to come to fruition over here. And uh, so again, for Dustin to come in the way that he did, and then the story they told in the ring, because there's no build up story, right? So the, all the storytelling has to come in the middle of those fucking ropes. Yep. And they did a fucking phenomenal job. Like they really did. It was, yeah. it was great. That that was a great pairing right there, man. Like props to both of those dudes for killing it. Like good shit. I mean, yeah, but to I, your point though, the veteran that Dustin Rhodes is comes in, does that, but Swerve is is wrestling with a veteran of forty years and doesn't miss a beat. Like mm-hmm. it was fucking it was it was sick. Nuts. Nuts. Yeah. So who's the devil? Do you, oh, you want to know? Is? You well, I know? gotta you want... I gotta know. Yeah. You haven't you haven't turned on your phone because it's all I've over. I'm trying your phone. not to, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right so well we got to tell the story though so it comes out uh you know obviously on dynamite that joe uh Samoa joe says that he's been in cahoots with the devil this whole time blah 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 so everyone's like still wondering adam cole is there he comes down and like kind of surprises everybody that he's there and he's in mjf's corner you know rooting him on match goes on and it's a great match through and through and throughout, uh, the 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 spot on the uh, the apron, yeah. What, what 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 was that move that he did on the apron where they just dropped MJF? It was uh, the the muscle buster, yeah, on the apron, and it was yeah. it was a great spot. Uh, like it 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 really captivated the audience for sure. And then to get back in there, they they did a great match, and then the finish, Samoa Joe wins, but it's by a arm falling all three times. Usually by the third time, that's when the you hulk up, right? Mm-hmm. And it just happened. And the ref plays it off so good. He's like, I don't even know what just happened. And he's like, ring the bell. And everyone's in shock because MJF just lost the title after like 400 and something days. And like, it, it actually happened. And I'm like, 
Oh my God. They just dropped the title to Samoa Joe. That's kudos to Joe. He deserved it. He's a fucking oh, yeah. phenomenal talent, obviously. And he now, I also saw something that he has now had a world title in every promotion that he's been in. Yep. So that's pretty fucking sick. Kudos to him. Um, but again, everyone's in shock. And then uh, the Max Men come down, you know, and everyone's surrounding and everything. And it looks like. Uh, MJF and Adam Cole are about to get jumped. Lights go out. And then, of course, Adam Cole is sitting in the chair when the lights come back on. And every, and they all take their mask off. And it's the the entire crew with uh, uh, Wardlow, uh, Rodney Strong, and the other two. I'm sorry. I forget their names the right now. The Kings of Matt Taven and, and uh, Mike Bennett. There you go. Um, yeah. And they're all standing around and they're like, we've been planning this the whole time. And and it didn't even hit me how good this was, you know, because like when Adam Cole was coming down, me and Frankie were debating, you know, doing our fantasy booking together. And I was like, I think Adam Cole might be the devil. And uh, because that seems like the obvious, like at at some point. I didn't think so because it had been so obvious for so long. I'm like, no, it's. Yeah, right. You thought there'd be some kind of a twist to it. Yeah. There's an even better twist than that, though, that in the storyline to me, because when you go back. And, then, and you could you could find this online and stuff, and yeah. everyone's already archived. How far back this storyline goes is, it's one of the it's one of the, it. I won't say it's Hogan Sting. It's not quite Hogan Sting, but that's a long storyline that they played out, and I think it was brilliant. And they there was no end to it that was messed up. Like I'm so excited to what's going to happen in 2024 with this storyline. Like it's yeah. it's so good. It was it was good, man. Like. Like you said, the subtle hints all throughout, like the friendship story was fun. Like there's a clip online from early summer where it's Cole hugging, you know, Max and like smacking his back. And then on like the last one, he just kind of like stabs. So mm. like, oh, damn, it's, it, there, there's some cool like little subtleties. If you go they didn't back mess and, around with this storyline, they uh, did not mess around with the storyline at all. It was it was well done. And you know, to be honest, like, again, comparing it to storylines that have lasted long and been well well done in the nineties, there was always missteps, right? I correct me if I'm wrong guys here. I didn't see any missteps on this storyline. No, I think it ended like they revealed the devil at the perfect time. It's Adam Cole. It makes sense. Like if it was anyone else, I don't think it would have made sense dude. like, who who are you going to put in that spot? That's that whole time. I was just like, it's gotta be someone in the company too. Cause I was like, maybe it's another big, big move. And I was like, who, it doesn't make sense. How does it make sense? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So, so like, I, yeah, I, it, I it had it. to be that. It was so good. It's so good. And I'm so excited to see that. Rabbit. And uh, now let's get to the comments on it real quick. <laughs> I want to get to this because we were talking in our thread. It's so funny how toxic and hilarious the internet is when this shit, when this kind of shit happens in the wrestling world. Like if you're not even a wrestling fan, I, and you're listening to this right now, just go, just type in something, AEW, anything. And you'll see like the amount of just, fantasy booking guys just like just talking um, so much shit and it's like it's so amazing because man they're like talking like like that mjf dropped the title to samoa joe because he's about to go to wwe uh wwe and i'm like are you watching this at all like (laughs) it's like he owns the company right now like yeah he's he is the king i mean and and he said, like, have you ever seen any of his uh, interviews and stuff recently? He's been championing the AEW like nobody's business right now and doing and being honest. Like you can read you can read between the lines sometimes, but like you can tell he's being honest about this stuff, too. And I'm like, what are you where are you getting this from? Like, he's got to drop the title before he leaves. Like, no, yeah, <laughs> that's no. not that's no, nothing. This is the hottest storyline in wrestling right now. He ain't leaving it. No. No shot. Well, then he no he's a he'd be a small fish in a big pond. Then, like you know what I mean? Like yes, I he, would, I he would still be great, but he's too early to do. I think he will do it at some point, but it's way I too early. I don't know. It, I think I think by the time he might, to your point, I I, I don't. AEW is still growing, dude. I that, think by yeah. that time it's supposed to be. He might be not. It? He might not. Like it might be. And he's the king of it. He's the one. Uh, you know. There's others, obviously. There's a whole roster, obviously, that is fucking phenomenal over there, to be honest. Like, I've been 
I've been critical sometimes in my head. I don't know if I've been critical on this show, but I've been critical sometimes in my head watching some shows and stuff and being like, ah, I just wish they did this. I wish they did that. But overall, you cannot look at that at what they've done since 2019 and not be impressed. Yeah. Like that is course. fucking it's it's great wrestling. He's Tony Khan, by the way, the That's G just, man. that he is with that scrum <laughs> fucking outfit. Oh God, so good. Um Tony Humpty Hump. Humphrey the Humpty third. Humpty Humpty. <laughs> he has put together a sick ass promotion. Just straight oh, yeah. up. It yeah, really is a sick He cares. Ass That's why. I feel yeah. like it's he's not a fan. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not just he, business. It's what do the fans want, you know? Yeah. yeah. And what does he want? I guarantee yeah. you, he he's fan. Dude, as we're all sitting here fantasy booking, he's getting to live the fantasy booking yeah. right he's now. He's literally doing it. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking sick, dude. And and I'm so glad. I know we just brushed upon it, but like his outfit and that scrub. If you guys haven't seen it, go just just type in Tony Khan images. It's the first one that shows up, I'm sure now. (laughs) Because, like, he's always been uh, unassuming, you know, kind of, you know, he comes out and does the forever and everything like that. And, like, he comes in in and out. But he's he's finally looking like a billionaire, in my opinion. Like, I'm (laughs) like, dude, why wouldn't you go for it? Like, go for it, dude. Have fun. I feel like he secretly wants a character, too. It's just yeah. he hasn't quite found it yet to not feel interjected. He's, but he's not forcing it. That's no, what that's not that great. That's what it, I'm yeah. saying. So I think he's like, hey, we'll throw this out there, see if anyone bites. But if not, we'll just let it go. You know? I'm biting, dude. I'm I'm hey. I'm I'm fucking um, hook, line, and sinker, dude. I'm in. Have you uh have you ever seen UWF from like the early nineties? I don't even know what that promotion is, dude. Look it up. There was a guy who run who ran it. His name was Herb Abrams, and he was a fucking monster. Like Imagine Tony Khan with like a sixteenth of the money, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but this dude started his own promotion, like had a press conference where he said, I, "I have all these wrestlers I've signed," and like he had like Bruiser Brody who had died like years prior, like on his roster. <laughs> like what? this dude was fucking nuts. But he's he would promote stuff with with wrestlers oh, that were dead. It was like his announcement of the company, like press conference, like he that they were a part of the company. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude was a fucking wild card, but Tony Khan reminds me a little bit of him in a good way. Not, like, <laughs> I was like, like, where are you going? That's not a bad <laughs> yeah. Energy wise, like if you watch the dude okay. on screen, right, like, energy see, wise, maybe energy wise, but that guy, that, you can't you can't compare the two when yeah, you that's just like talk about that roster. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Khan is bringing in wor- uh, like a world of wrestling. That's the other yeah. thing that I have to give yeah. like props to. His guys are alive, so he's bringing in. They, you know, they, not, well, not only that, like. Honestly, like no joke, he's bringing in, he's cross promoting across continents, like and doing it right off the bat and really well. Like that is kind of the smart t- globally. He's he's thinking globally. He ain't like, and it's actually really brilliant because you if, if you compare it to, I know they don't like the comparison, but Vince McMahon when Vince McMahon did it in the eighties, he he was the first one to make it international or not international, uh, uh, nationwide. Yeah. That was his big thing is that he was going to take it to cable. Well, you know, you know, 40 plus years later or 40 years later, what are we looking at? A global, everything's on the internet. You're looking globally yep. anyway. And he's really placating to that very smartly and very well, I think. I think, I think both. he's got his football league. Yeah. Soccer, yeah. But he's got, I think he soccer, knows that he's space. Got, he's, yeah. he's got the Jacksonville Jaguars as well. And they play the most games already since they, you know, uh, since they've been doing London games and Germany games. They play yeah. the most uh, overseas. I think wrestling itself is just lending, like American wrestling is spreading out globally. It has been for a while now, but like right. even if you look at WWE right now, look how many uh, PLEs they have scheduled internationally this year for the first time ever. Yeah. Like they're hitting France, they're hitting Germany. Like fucking wild. It hasn't, like, it's it never hasn't been. Before. It's been a minute since it's. You, I mean, I remember when they started to branch out like that in the nineties. Yeah, and you know they had the SummerSlam in in London, which was amazing. Uh, yeah. Was that 93, something like that? So like, like 92, 93, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they used to do stuff like that. And then for mm-hmm. a long time, it just seemed like they just stayed in uh, in the States and Canada. Yeah. And then it looks like they're they're making a push to go out there, too, which is great. I mean. Back out there, doing some talent sharing. Like, uh, they had some NXT guys on an All Japan show last night or the night before. So, like, it's oh, it's cool to see that that happening, you know? Absolutely. No, it's, as we've said many times here on the show, it's just a great time to be a wrestling fan. Like it really is like if, and if you're not in and you're like 
were a kid and you're like, I haven't, you know, I haven't watched wrestling in years. Like it, it, you know, maybe you haven't watched since the attitude era, which was kind of me, but I'm telling you right now is a good time again. Like, yeah, it, it comes in cycles. And right now is a good time to be a fan of both, you know, everything wrestling. Talking WWE for a minute. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but Kevin Dunn, who was there, like director. Yeah, I saw. He's everything. gone now. Yeah, He's gone. Yeah. So like, ah. that's wild. I wonder. I wonder. I, I got to listen to eighty three weeks on that because I know Eric Bischoff was a big fan of of Kevin Dunn and, and did has worked with him a lot too. So I'm curious to see what Eric has to say about that. On the flip side, I want to hear what Jim Cornette has to say because he hated that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess everyone's just gonna go listen to their two podcasts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I want to know, like, stylistically, does anything change on screen? Because mm. my man was giving me car sickness for a while with every cut, every fucking like. You five know, seconds. I was Dude. critical of that too. Like, because yeah. like for a minute, they they me- they mellowed it out over the last year or two. But for a minute there, when I would switch over and watch some some WWE, I was. I texted you about it, Brandon. I was like, yeah. what are they doing? Like, <laughs> Yeah, dude. It was like that fast cut on every hit with like, oh, they're hitting. So we're going to get all fucking yeah. four angles in on every hit. And I'm like, that's too, too much. much. You're going to cause seizures, much. bro. Yeah, like way too much. Just let it. I just picture like bit. Batman, like the old sh- TV show where they're just doing <laughs> pow. It, it was yeah. that, but like, but like at supersonic speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like causing sickness and like the cameraman's like going with every shot. It's like, yeah. holy shit, man. Like, listen, and it wasn't it even breathe. like, like if you use that maybe once in a three hour showing, cool. Yeah. But yeah. it was in every match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use it to sell like big spots. It makes sense. Yeah. But not every move, every match, all show. That's too much. Yeah. But yeah, curious to, uh, curious to see what happens yeah. stylistically with the show. If anything, maybe it doesn't. Dude, I'm excited. We're, we're in Rumble. And WrestleMania season, Dude. and there is so much shit going on over in WWE. I am so happy again yeah. to be a wrestling fan. Like we're talking about both both organizations right now, and like they're firing. Both of them are firing right now. They're already teasing a former world champion making a return tonight on day one. Ooh, so, are they really? They well, are. We'll have to watch. Well, by the time everyone hears this, everyone will know what. Yeah, what, what who happened. Was. But who do you think is going to be? Throw a name out. I'm a world champion coming back. You know, it, it, you go so many ways with that, right? Is it is yeah. it a, is it a fun spot where they bring in someone like really old and just like have fun with it? Or is it someone who's going to actually be legit? I think it's got to be someone legit. But is it is it like a, is it a one off appearance or is it like a return to the company? Yeah, that's what you know? that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my head around right now. Yeah, man. Like, I, I really, I really I don't, don't have any ideas. Who do you got, Brando? I don't. I don't know. Um, in the text thread last night, I was saying like, I could see Andrade coming back, but I, I see that more on SmackDown. Like that's going to be an LWO kind of thing. So I don't know yeah. if. Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. It, I don't think it would be. I don't. I mean, it would make it make it make waves. It'd make a little bit of waves if they did it right away. Yeah. Because I think everyone really believes that Andre's uh, going to. Yeah. WWE. Yeah, I think but I, I, I'm, I I told you though I'm still skeptic on that too, because I don't know yeah, uh, the LWO exactly. will be a great move for sure. Yeah. Outside of that, I don't know. I don't know what he's gonna. I would like to see Flair be his manager, now that he's under contract in AEW. Nah, bro. The Flair thing's ride until at least March with Sting. Like, I, I see Andrade coming back. He's taking on Santos. He, he's you know. Being the new leader of the LWO takes on Santos Escobar and his two goons, and that's that's the feud right there. Like, mm. you're, you're probably right. You're yeah. probably right. I don't Can know. Hogan we'll come see. back? Do you guys think? Did you say Hogan? Yeah, <laughs> honestly, could he come back with the he steam come back going as away? a spot? He could come back as a spot, but his body's his body's shot, dude. He he's would never. Like, he's banned from AEW, Sam. I don't know if you know that. Well, Tony I'm, Khan has banned him and his wife from AEW forever. I didn't know that. Is that? I legit? didn't know that either. That's a real thing. Yeah. Because wow. he's a horrible why, person. What? Well, do you know what the reason is? Like, I don't know. Is it? Is it? Is it because of Hogan's like? Probably. Uh, it probably past you that past Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure if you say probably that, a smart then move the question is get asked. Tony's behalf. <laughs> right. I mean, well, 
I forget what what WrestleMania it was. It was like post COVID, but they had, I think it was the first one po- post COVID where they had the live audience back, and uh, Hogan was like a guest host of the show with Titus yeah, O'Neil, yeah, yeah. and they booed the fuck out of him, dude. Really? Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that post on social media? And I don't know if it's real or not, but I want it to be where Hulk Hogan says, Hey, Bam, really wish you were still alive. Miss you. And he's, and then there's a Twitter under, and Bam's like, I'm still fucking right here. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, I've seen that. Well, dude, <laughs> remember our story, or uh, Joe's told it a, a million times, so I'm not throwing him under the bus. When we went to lunch with Joe Magnello and, uh, and uh, John Feldman, Joe told again the story of him butchering his name and just like kept doing it to the point where it became like uh you know like like a thing like it, is he the machine joe mania, what, joe mania that's what joe, mania. <laughs> joe mania he just went with joe mania because he couldn't pronounce his last name <laughs> magnello is not the, and then i had to, <laughs> behind the scenes i did have to uh, have to apologize to him because i messed up his name while he was on the show we literally had to edit every time that you said his name. <laughs> every time i said his name i had to put it so if you go back and listen to that episode if you, I mean, it's you probably overdone. don't even listen that clearly. You could hear the cuts of me redoing it. <laughs> it's so good. But I'm in good company, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. No, that's... That was a good, that was a good lunch that we did for your birthday too. Like now let's yeah. get into a little bit of the recap. We'll come back to AEW because there's something I want to talk about there. But uh, yeah. as far as uh, recapping stuff. Sam put together for his birthday a really nice lunch in L.A. when Brandon was in town as well. And we all got to go with uh, Spencer Charnis, my good friend, Dan, our good friend, Dan Leo, and uh, uh, Joe and John Feldman. And it was a really good time. And, it, like, I was kind of dragging my feet on it, to be honest. And Sam was, like, championing it. <laughs> you would do it. I almost, we, we, our friendship almost ended on the way. <laughs> <laughs> And Brandon was like, "Daddy slapped mommy at the dinner table and has to." Oh, he was so in silent in the car. He was so silent in the car. <laughs> but also so hungover, dude. <laughs> that was like day five of a binge for me, and I was just like, "I'm dying." Yeah. Like, so, I'm backstory dying. for people listening, if you're going to say it. So, we had a, a certain time where we had to be in LA at like eleven thirty or something, and so I told everybody to be there. At, hey, at ten o'clock we'll leave, knowing. 10.30 will be the drop dead time, but uh, Brandon's texting at like 10.05 being like, I'm really sorry I'm late, and I'm like, oh, it's all good. And I walk in John's house, <laughs> like, hello, hello. And then I hear John still in bed at 10.15 <laughs> when we're supposed to leave in 15 minutes. And then all he hears is, then he gets to the shower, I'm like, are you almost ready? He, he goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, we have to leave in three minutes. And he goes, cool. And then he gets in the car 10 minutes later, and then later Eight he goes, what's the later. big deal? You told me three minutes is what we need. I'm like, yeah, that was. <laughs> so we all made it on time. We were all fine. <laughs> it was just. It worked out. I was only you five minutes late. You were stressed. <laughs> Sam was so stressed. It was not five minutes late. We were 20 minutes <laughs> late to something. I was that five, minutes, invited I was five minutes past the cutoff. We left at 1035. That is not true. Yeah, we left at 1035. So that is true. I have text messages. 10, 1035. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, but, but we the had drive a drive up lunch. was so good because he was so mad, and I just kept laying into it about it. Like I, I, at that point, I knew I already fucked up. So now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be an asshole about it. Yes. And and Sam was just getting so mad. And then my Brandon's favorite was when you so when you went in the, uh, you got out of the fast lane because you mm-hmm. thought you were supposed to. <laughs> I ra- added my GPS. like another like 15 minutes to. Yes. It. <laughs> and you thought it was hilarious. And Brandon thought it was very funny. <laughs> was so and I got to the point where I was like. <laughs> You guys can laugh all you want. I'm not going to because I don't think it's funny. <laughs> and all I kept saying to you, too, is I was like, dude, I, I know you're new to the industry. No one's on time in the industry. Dude. Yeah, I refuse to believe that. That's like saying everybody's an asshole. No, there are people that aren't. Like, you know, I, that's not me. I'm, you I'm, you I'm and Zach. Late. Zach is another one that's like very prompt and everything like that. And I'm just. Is he December? Just Didn't he? Isn't he a December? Yeah, you change? guys are both December <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing, but people say that. <laughs> you want your Christmas right on time. You want everything right on time. <laughs> but it was really cool having. Uh, it was really cool that week having you guys out because we did a couple things. We we met with some uh, past uh, uh, guests and friends of the show. Um, we also went to the Bad Wolves uh, acoustic thing that they oh, yeah. did over at uh, uh, Jose Megan's place. That was fun too. That was fun. that was cool. We yeah, made some new really friends. Cool. 
Yeah. Made, made some new friends, and but also hung out with some old ones. I, I ran into uh, Brandon Chappetti of uh, uh, Bleeding Through, who I hadn't seen in many years. And, like, so so fun catching up with him. Um, of course, seeing Doc. Doc was was the man that night. Like it was it was great. It was it was it was really fun. Jose, his whole family, the Mangan family, like super hospitable. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a cool experience, man. And honestly, like a really good turnout. Like I don't yeah. know. I thought it was fun. Yeah. It was a great Wednesday. I threw up in your bushes. Yeah, that was before we even went out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, I threw up behind your Santa. I have a Santa set up outside of my lawn. <laughs> uh, the the most awkward part was uh, when we met John, the drummer of uh, Bad Wolves. And I asked yeah. where he lives. <laughs> and then he uh, proceeded to... <laughs> That Tell was the best. Wait, 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 wait. You're not doing that justice. I know. It I was, was like, so funny. Said, we were like, all talking. Wanna... We've been talking with John for for several minutes. Whatever. We're, we're just rapping, and having a good time. And obviously, Sam being the producer and booker of the show, uh, and tries to get guests. His first line to try and get John on the show was, "Hey, where do you live?" <laughs> Yeah, it was completely. We had, <laughs> it was like, and I just immediately called him out. I'm like, yeah. you don't just ask someone where they lived. <laughs> and we just talked about cucks right before. <laughs> He's like, oh, where do you live? I'm, I'm kind of a cuck myself. <laughs> it was a definite foot and mouth moment, and we all just started busting up laughing. I mean, uh, it was the it joke was, of the night. In fact, when we started following each other on uh, the drinks with Johnny and him, and his direct message was. Where you live, cucks. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to have him on. It'll be fun. We're definitely going to have him on this year for sure. For I don't sure. know where he lives, though. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to his house. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking yeah. back, we've had a lot of guests. And, man, a year goes by. And I was like, oh, that was this year? Like, Zach Myers, I forgot he returned this year. We had Brad mm-hmm. Williams at the beginning of the year talking about WrestleMania. Yeah, that's right. Um, that was actually, Brad Williams was one of uh, the... I, I did the Filthy Animal Discord monthly chat for December, and I was asking everybody there, like, what, what their favorite ones. And, and Brad came up a couple of times, like, just even just have him coming on and talking talking smack about WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was the first guest of the se- of season five, I yeah. guess. I don't think we're yeah, doing seasons was. anymore. And tied for the was. most frequent with Darby, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. cool golfers on his ball. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I will a say inside joke for everybody. If you don't know, you go back and watch that episode. Fast forward, do whatever you got to do, but it's got to be on YouTube and go find the golfers that Brandon is talking about because it's a little inside joke there. I will say that I saw Brad at a show the other day, and I was going to bring that up, but there's other people in the room that I didn't think it'd go over as well, not knowing what's going on. So I didn't. <laughs> you made a you made a figure for him, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Sam's but, had a good year of making figures, by the way. Dude, it's you made fun. some fucking badass ones, man. Yeah. Like this Brando, yeah. Brando Lombardo one came out pretty well, good. Well, you know that one's pretty cool too. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think I, I think you. The only critique I have on it is he looks a little too jacked. Like, yeah, think, you know, a lot of yeah, people said that. I think he made it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Says the treadmill fucking salesman of fucking Newcastle. Oh, I should add that trail. <laughs> <laughs> Greater PA's <laughs> treadmill salesman. Oh, man. Dude, uh, it's a good figure, though. I, I will. I, real quick, you could you could prop up my wife over there. And and uh, I was really impressed with how Karen did the tattoos on it. Oh, yeah. Karen, oh, yeah. my wife, uh, did the, she did this the fine-tuning stuff because I started doing some tattoos. And she's like... That looks like garbage. Let me uh, let me help out. And the reason why, Brandon, I don't like usually making figures for friends because other people are like, hey, make one for me. But uh, Brandon, I have owed this for a long time. He helped. Uh, my wife was trying. My wife there it is. was there trying it is. to get a job. <laughs> there it <laughs> there is. There it is. There it is. Uh, oh yeah, that's not too jacked. That's like perfect. Are you kidding me? Your waist is like nothing, and your yeah. legs and arms are gigantic. I'm so like, no, can you that guys is not accurate at all? <laughs> but there, there's some really, really good detail on here. Yeah, especially when Sam texts me and asks for a picture of my meat monster. Like that, <laughs> that was the meat monster he was talking about, John. That was the meat. Okay, I'm so glad you cleared that up because I still didn't know what the fuck the meat monster was. You but. sit in a text, fucking <laughs> Sam asked me to, uh, for a picture of my meat monster. I was like, "That's Merry Christmas." Up. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I didn't dispute it. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. Um, but no, Meat monster needs to be a thing on this show. Well, by a the way. smart idea. What it was was my wife, my our friend Nicole had said a new thing that the kids are doing today uh, on resumes are they're putting a QR code where you can scan it and there's like almost like a commercial of yourself, so someone can read it and it differentiates you from other people. My wife had just gotten off of COVID trying to slap together this video. It's in our dark room. We didn't have any lighting or anything great. And then we gave it to Brandon and he added all these graphics and did all these things and cut it beautifully. And she ended up getting the job. And even after that, she's a teacher. All these other principals that she had sent it to have stopped her and be like, you're the one that made that video. Holy crap. That was really cool. So awesome. to stand out a little nice. life hack guys is add those QR codes with a little blurb about you to stand out and then have someone like brandon who can make it look good yeah and give it to brandon so my wife was repaying by doing the tattoos she was happy to participate with that yeah and then my son goes yeah but you're just gonna take all the credit for it i said no i won't i will tell (laughs) you should have though i like like (laughs) (laughs) yeah i totally got this awesome hat for brandon so thank you get you a hat and some shirts dude i appreciate it yeah but so it, some other guests. Let's, let's some talk other about guests. some. What, what, yeah, what the else did we have? Butcher babies were on. We got to have yes. both of them. That oh, was a fun back one. Back to AEW. Did you know uh Carla did a song for uh Sky Blue? Sky Blue. Yeah, it I saw that. Badass. Fucking very cool. Very cool. But yeah, Butcher Babies. It's... Fuck man, who else? you mentioned Zach Myers and I got it. That that brings me to we did NBA talk with him, mm-hmm. right? And uh I I put out a tweet on our drinks with Johnny account uh, after I saw it, but like LeBron got robbed on the three and it was like, it was, it was incredible. I've never seen anything like it. They reviewed this three that he's clearly behind the three point line and they still got it wrong. So I put out a tweet and it'll happen eventually. I'm sure. But I was like, why doesn't all these major sports just do what tennis does with the lines? Use that technology. There's no debate that that way. They have they have the technology with lasers and camera angles, everything like that, where you, you take it out of the ref's hands. It literally becomes something that's that's automatic and you know what it is. Like if you got I don't know if you guys watch tennis. I watch a lot of tennis. And uh you know, there's you, you still have a challenge, but you never that you never see a tennis player use it because it's so cut and dry what happened on every the ball placement on it is like it's insane like and the obviously the technology is there why aren't they using that in every other major sport i, I just don't get it well, i'm sure there's politics behind it of time oh, wasting of course there is. there's gambling the and everything yeah. else they don't gamble yeah. that much on tennis that's that, that's the big thing <laughs> different clientele yeah <laughs> mm. we were, speaking of sports we had a we've had a couple of people we got professional boxers we've had nfl uh was uh, that this season oh yeah that was that we was had, we, yeah we had a baku yeah on on the show yeah our first oh, yeah, that's uh, right that's right New that York was our channel. first nfl guy um yeah. and he came out to madison square garden too oh did got he? to hang oh. out with him yeah he was in madison square garden when we played it was me and him and darby actually we're, oh, we're nice. hanging out late uh, like after the show uh, uh having some fun so baku's a good good dude good dude did you didn't get up to that one did you brandon? what's up no brandon didn't go I wasn't on that one. I wasn't on a lot of them this year. I just no. I mean, uh, to get out. To oh, you were, you were, you were at the one though. The what was the the one in Ohio when I spit wine on your face? Uh, Sonic Temple. Sonic Temple. You spit yeah, wine. Sam, did you ever hear this story? No, I don't remember. <laughs> oh <my God>. Dude. <laughs> that Wait, was like tell that's it from your perspective. Tell, tell it from your perspective, and then, I, and then I'll try and clean it up and make myself look better. But no, I really no, can't. no shot. Yeah. We were. We were it was after the show, you know, we were all a few drinks in, obviously. And uh yeah, we're just we're just having a conversation. It's like I think it's like Brian, Zach, and Danny Wimmer just sitting there having their own conversation, then you, me, and Megan standing up having a conversation. And mm-hmm. I don't remember what I it was that was said, but I made a funny and we're standing there, and Johnny takes a sip of wine and just spits it on me and Megan and like busts up laughing. It and everyone in the room you. just stops. It was mostly on you. Mostly on me. And everyone <laughs> in the room just stops. And Zach goes, really, Johnny? Like, really? Like, 
yeah, it was a thing, man. I don't I don't remember what the fucking joke was though. I don't remember what the good. joke was. It was, I was good. I was in. I'll, I'll try to defend myself here. No. I was in mid drink when the joke happened, and I came at, came out of it, and I started to laugh, and it, it was coming out of my mouth, and for some reason, I looked right at Brandon, so like I projectiled all of this red wine straight onto his face. Yeah, and Zach was like, dude. He's like, but that even was like hesitant and you still did it. And I, was like, I really didn't mean to. I, I have no explanation of why, but it just, it just kind of happened. And I obviously I didn't mean to sp spit a bunch of red wine in my friend's face. <laughs> Sounds like Ohio. Yeah, it was, it it was, was very an Ohio, Ohio night. It was, it was very Ohio, Ohio night. Yeah. I, I met your dad that night, which was cool. Yes, he did. We talked wrestling. And yeah. I would love to go to a shitty VFW wrestling match with him. Oh, dude. And he his would, friend. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. He would. Yeah. My dad, obviously, as people know, this show is the one who got me into wrestling, as most of most of us are. It's a generational thing. Usually your dad gets you into it and stuff. Um, But, yeah, like my dad, doing the clown story, everything. I've, I've brought him up pretty much every time we talk to a Hall of Famer, you know, because he's, he's, uh, there's a direct correlation with Hall of Famers, me and my dad. So, it. It's been fun, and he's such. I mean, he'd tell stories like before WWE when there was still regional promotions and stuff. When he was when he was our age, or actually younger, way younger, because by this time he had three kids. When before he had kids, and he was drinking and stuff, and he him and his friends would just like talk shit to these wrestlers, like just like straight up. He was like one of those guys that would just. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're such a piece of shit, <laughs> dude. You should start doing that, like. <laughs> And he's also he's also he's also like I'm a mini me like me and my my brothers got height from my uh, my mom's side. Me and him are like the, like the exact same person, and I'm like, you would these guys would just fucking eat you alive. What the fuck are you doing, <laughs> dude? All right, here's the deal: Sting's last match, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We'll get we'll get good seats and just get shit faced and talk. <laughs> No. I want to see who will be the first. First of all, that's not happening. Guys. But we are going. Uh, you guys, you guys got your flights yet? Not yet. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna book them. Right. Book I already got my flight. I'm going. Yeah, I, I'll be there 100. percent Done, done deal. It's happening. I'm so just so you know, that. John has a reputation. He told what? me at the pay per view I needed to drop the prices right bit down a little bit because we were on camera, and I was like, "Dude, this is how I am on the like." I was having so much fun oh wait wait wait! you gotta give a backstory on that so one. no you, so, but you're he was talking about yelling at the show and i was like i don't i don't know if john will be able to fully let out what he would want to in public but i don't mind making a fool right next to him <laughs> well that was that was my birthday and we went so uh AEW did uh two nights in at the forum the first night we took the kids which was amazing chris jericho took amazing care of us it, it, oh yeah, good yeah. friend of mine for you know 13 years now and uh, you know, got to the kids got to meet MJF while we were all chatting and shit. It was a really cool night. And then the second night, we went back for the pay per view, and we had uh, seats hooked up through CAA and the Forum. Thank you guys again. Oh, it was amazing. Um, uh, that were on the main cam, basically the nice. entire show. Nice. And at one point, I w we we sat down, and I didn't realize that they had like a waitress that was going to come around. So I went down to the bar. Like a few of us went down to the bar. And then uh, AEW staff came out and were like, hey, you guys can't leave your seats. Like, you guys are in hard cam. So they sent in a couple other people. And then, like, after that is when I saw Sam start losing his shit. And I was like, dude, you don't need to play it that hard. And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm like, dude. I was drunk by that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, had had a, we had had a few seltzers on the way up. So <laughs> we had some drinks nice. for Johnny Seltzers. Which dude, and the group we went with was great. Soon. There's Everybody was so into it. It was mm -hmm. It's fun. It, I How mean, could the you not be into so, it, though? That, yeah. that pay-per-view was sick. Oh. Dude, that's just live wrestling in general. I remember. Exactly. Yeah. The first I, I keep telling there. people who are, like, poo-pooing wrestling, I'm like, Dude, Dude, just go. You got you, kids. Just bring the. It's a show. It's yeah. a show. It's a like, show, man. Of any show, like it's entertaining. You know. Dude, and that's the whole thing. I'm glad you brought that up because, like, yeah, you still. I don't understand what the stigma is anymore uh, on wrestling fans, and there yeah, still it's been is. Like far people, too long. Like, it's I mean, been far, like half our on, movie dude. stars are wrestlers. Like, I yeah. mean, come on, people. Yeah. Wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you watching? Like, I get it. Like, you still have this whole thing against that f word and everything like that. It's like, but you watch nothing but that f word like that's, yeah, reality that's, shows yeah like that's nothing that yeah. you already watched that why is it any different 
It's actually if they tell good stories, I'm, and I agree, some stories suck. But you, but you got to understand, you're telling stories for how many years now? Every week, week in, week out. What, what other thing can you point to that does that? There's nothing else in our in entertainment that does what wrestling does, and has done, and proven they've been able to do well for a long time. I, I just don't understand the stigma about about it. I'm like. You read books, you, you watch movies, you watch TV shows. It's in the same fucking genre. Like, what are you talking about? When there's a good storyline, you follow it. The shitty ones, every everyone puts a thumbs down on it and they move on from it. That's what happens. Yeah. It's like in any show. Yeah, dude. I mean, look, Monday Night Raw has been going strong since 1993. And we're about dude, to have you, the first episode. You were probably You were probably a little too young, but do you remember the first Monday Night Raw? Nah, I, I've watched it though. I have it on DVD. Uh, I watched it. I watched it live with my with my dad. He let me stay up that Monday because nice. I, obviously I had school the next day. But he let me stay up that Monday, and I remember that set like, yeah. oh my god, that set with the fucking red everywhere, the red velvet everywhere. That's it. it was, the, that's the Manhattan Center. It, was it? Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I never knew that. Thank you. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's obviously like a like a theater. Yeah, and, they yeah. they did a throwback raw, man. Maybe like five years ago or so. They went back and they did it. It was like a uh, simulcast. They did it in an actual arena, and then they had a show there too, where they did a couple matches. Oh, that's it's cool. Rad. That's yeah. rad. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, re- it's really cool. cool. Man, yeah, so Fucking, much fun. I love wrestling. Love wrestling. Yeah, yeah. That's what the, I mean. Obviously, that's what we're talking about the most right now. Um, actually, you know what? While we're on the subject of wrestling, real quick. And then we'll get back to the recap. Okay. Um, I, I'd be remiss to point out that like, so the other match that happened at World's End, it's our boy Darby, and Sting, teamed up with Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. And even before that match happened, I saw this sign out in the in the crowd, and it said at World or like World's NDA, and I was like, I don't even know what that means because I I. We talked about it now, but like at the time, I had no idea. Apparently, Chris Jericho's in the hot seat right now, and I didn't know why. You know, he um, we we're friends, but we don't like we don't text like every day or anything like that. So I had no idea what was going on. I I, I heard about it afterward, and I was like, eh. so I was curious, and I asked Brandon. Brandon, can you uh, fill us in on a little bit of what what's going on with Chris Jericho's heat outside of the ring, Dude. obviously? It's just fucking Twitter being Twitter, man. Like wrestling yeah. fans on Twitter jumping to anything they can. Um, I don't know. People people are getting on him like Christmas Day because he had some kind of a response to this guy on Twitter named Stephen P. New. He's a lawyer. If you listen to Jim Cornette's podcast, you probably know who this guy is. He made a comment about the brawl out situation and saying the only person who didn't sign an NDA was Ace Steel's wife. And Jericho chimed in and said, oh, I didn't sign an NDA. Started this whole back and forth. All all these people come out, whether you're pro CM Punk, anti CM Punk, whatever the situation, right? But like people are throwing shade at Jericho now and it, it's like a whole fucking thing. And then some guy on a podcast, he's a journalist, made a comment. Wait, what's comparing, his name? No, we, we got to put a name on it. We're not. We're uh, not. Nick, Nick Hausman. That's I haven't. I've. Yeah. Never heard of this dude until I saw this clip from the podcast. Which, by the way, I hadn't heard of him when you told me this. Just, yeah. I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw myself out there. When I heard this, like, it was an obvious. I want more views. Yeah, move. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It just he basically compared Jericho to Harvey Weinstein, and it's like, oh, that's a <laughs> fucking bold claim there, without anything to back it up. You know, like, all right, you got receipts, like, put it out there. Otherwise, yeah. you're just making unfounded claims, and now the fucking Twitterverse is going to just roll with it, and fucking, it's what happened, tweet after tweet after tweet, all these journalists and all these journalist wrestling accounts are, are saying, oh, Jericho did X, Y, and Z, and it's like, did he, though? Like, is there Wait, any there's, proof? There's no backing to it. That's, that's, that's the craziest thing to me, yeah. and then, like, when I... So I saw those tweets too, like because I yeah. I went on Twitter after the match, you know, after the pay per view, and I was going to tweet about it and you know congratulate the roster and stuff, and I saw all this hate come in, and I was like, I didn't realize. Okay, I know how I thought I knew how toxic 
Twitter can be and wrestling fans can be. Because oh, yeah. after every pay per view on both organizations, everyone's talking shit. Yeah. You know, you you have a few pedals thrown at your feet, and then you get a bunch of shit talked on you. Which is actually brilliant, by the way, that Tony Khan does a scrum after every pay per view. By the way, to yeah. kind of help quell that a little bit. But it's just so funny because I'm just like, like you said, there's no basis. Like you're on Twitter, you are guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. It's it's insane. Like I mean, even Ronnie Radke, who we, who we had on, on tour, that he before when we announced the tour, and then there was like all this shit that came out that had no basis whatsoever. No. But people were canceling the shit out of him for for Bruh. a hot second. Obviously, he could, and, oh, you mean for a hot second, he could sit on the daily. He gets it all the time, but that one was a little louder, I'll say. Yeah. It yeah. felt a little louder anyway. But obviously, yeah. it, it amounted to nothing because, again, like, I'm glad the I've said it before. I'm glad the, the, the pendulum is starting to shift back, but it's still not all the way there. And especially in the wrestling, I didn't know it was still that toxic in wrestling. Like, oh, yeah, dude. To go, look, I've been friends for with Chris for 13 years now. We're not, like, the tightest in the world, but he's a good, he's a good friend. Like we text and hang out and stuff. I, I, the accusations, I can't even imagine. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, like there's zero in my mind, zero chance that that's, that there's any basis on it at all. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like, dumb, dude. and he's too busy to do anything like that. The guy so, already I mean, has to right. have a clone to yeah, be able I to mean, do the shit that he does. Yeah. Like, and and the other thing, okay, the, the really funny thing, the, the tweet that you sent me, Brandon, that made me kind of laugh uh, was that it was uh, like something about Chris had had uh, uh, sexual assault on people and then had them sign an NDA. And I was like, I don't think it works that way. When you go assault, like misconduct, maybe, but straight up assault I don't think an NDA would even save you from that. That's that's no. super illegal. Like that's yeah. not that's not an NDA kind of thing. So no. based on that, and I'm not a lawyer, but in my mind, I'm thinking legally. I'm like, that doesn't even fucking make sense to begin with. Here's the other side of it. If it did happen, and both parties signed an NDA, both parties are in agreement at that point that hey, whatever happened happened, and cool. But that like, wouldn't be assault. That would be yeah, no. exactly. But that wouldn't be assault. Yeah. It's not like it's not like he does something and then says, "Hey, or sign this." You know what I mean? Right. Like that doesn't right. that doesn't make fucking sense. Right. That's why assault is a very. That's a the fact that they accuse him of assault, not just misconduct or immorality or anything like that. They went straight for assault. Is why I'm just like, you're just shooting for anything. Because that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to say that that uh, Hausman dude is one who said there was assault, but... Do we oh, have any, like, what is... The, an accusation is just that. Like, assault could be someone said, hey, nice pussy. You know what I mean? Like, what what is but the is level? is that assault or is that misconduct? Well, I don't know. That I, I don't know what the word, so I don't know the full story. Do you even know what the allegations no, are? No, I haven't seen anything. Brandon, have you? Do you know what the, like, was there a specific incident that was cited? Supposedly, yeah, people are pointing to this uh, wrestler, Kylie Ray. Uh, okay, I saw Kylie a little Ray. bit of that. Okay. Yeah. And again, this is not fact. This isn't based on anything factual that I this know. This is of what's being reported. That we're just, we're, just we're, we're reacting Twitter. to what's being reported what Twitter on Twitter, says by the way. Is. <laughs> right. But yeah, supposedly, uh, it's actually she, she was invited to Jericho's locker room thinking other people would be there. No one else was there. It was just those two and something happened. And then she had left wrestling, uh, I don't know, soon after. And I don't mean to, and again, based on Twitter and everything like that, and I don't want to uh, attack this woman who I've never met right. before, and I don't mean it in an attacking way at all. But doesn't she have a history, too, of leaving companies uh, or leaving, uh, 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 what, am I, what, what am I thinking, not companies, but you know what I mean? Has, hasn't she had a, a history of... Yeah, she, she, yeah she, she's, she's been like hot and cold in different companies, like showed up for a couple appearances and then you know you don't see her again uh, i think like she was an impact for a minute i think wwe for a hot minute so like yeah i don't know it's just the whole thing is just very interesting to me because again knowing chris i don't i don't see it yeah. um i i would like to say that i'm like 110 percent. that's never the fucking case but yeah human beings are human beings and i don't i i i, I could say 99.9 I, I don't think that that would, that would be the case, but like, 
I, I just don't see it. Like it just doesn't, it just, none of it adds up to me in my mind. And again, dude, it's the trial by media. It's, it's, yeah. it's Twitter and why, just fucking. And that's, that was the shitty part to me to be like, even I know it sucks, but to say, but even if I'm wrong, I'm dead fucking ass wrong. And something happened again, guilty before proven innocent. There was people in yeah. the audience, I guess that were like booing the shit out of, out of Chris when he came out and, and to do his thing. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't even, none, none of us know. The only two yeah. people that know what happened is Chris and Kylie, or whatever her name is. Uh, right. And to, and it hasn't come out to a legal battle. There's nothing like that. You're literally basing off rumor and innuendo. And to come to, so, to come to a pay-per-view and boo somebody based on that and hold up signs on that. I think yeah. I just I just think that's shitty. I think that's a shitty move. I, I do too, man. Because you're not basing it on facts. You're just basing it off of something you saw online, man. Yeah. I just well, I don't have the hard line of wrestling that. though, of people not knowing where the line is of what they can you know bring what? And what they can. That's not a bad argument. I I, yeah. I will admit that's not a bad argument at all. Um because that I mean, you go back to when we talked to Jake the Snake. Like yeah. he got he got they fucking be razor blade yeah. because they, yeah. they, they, they didn't know. So that is part of it. It is. I just hope that it stays that way. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like you don't want it to escalate. And I think I'm hopeful that it, that it won't. And I think it's more pay-per-view banter. Uh, as you said, uh, Brandon, the wrestling world just uh, snowballs down, down yeah. avenues. It's but, wrestling social media sucks because those are the type of things that take all the attention away from the pay-per-view. And it seems to happen every single time is, Every time there's a, a big event happening that's noteworthy upon itself, things like this kind of take the limelight on Twitter or social media anyway. And that's kind of what steals it. And that sucks because the point of the show is the hard work that every fucking guy and girl on that card did to make that show. They put on a successful. show to entertain you know? millions of people. Yeah. And it sucks to see it get outshadowed by some of this talk online. Yeah. It really is. It's really unfortunate. And I mean, it happens in other entertainment too. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Like, like, we, like we mentioned in music too, with Ronnie and, and, and yeah. figures like that. It just, I just really hope that people understand that that's not the way the world real world works. And the other thing is I was talking to other <laughs> adults, old people, I'll say, um, if you really think about it, you got a lot, you don't know how old, these people are commenting and creating these rumors and innu innuendos are. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I, you know, when AOL was a thing and chat rooms were just, you know, budding, I used to go on there and talk shit. Cause I thought it was yeah. funny. I was 12 years old and I'd, I'd, I'd rile up some motherfuckers and do that. And I, I could see how that's still the case and people aren't looking at like how old these people are or anything like that. Like, yeah, you, you have, you have no background. You can be so anonymous it, that man. Is just you're like, seeing a you're seeing a handle and a photo, a profile yeah. photo, and you don't even know if that's a real person. Half of them are not. And who's going to take the extra step to see how old that kid is? You know, yeah, like exactly. you, you're not going to. And it's just unfortunate though because I see that, and it actually manifests sometimes into the real world. And it's like that's not fair. That's just that's just not fair. Like this that, that's not the way it should be. And it's like that cancel culture is just fucking toxic as shit. Like because again. I'll say it again. Okay. The real problem with it is that you're you're guilty until proven innocent. And that's just not the way it should be. Like you can't you can't jump to conclusions like they do that like they do yeah. on, on Twitter. They just jump to conclusions all the time. Yeah. It's crazy. It's definitely wow. toxic. Very toxic. Oh, speaking of toxic though, let's get back to the recap. We did have the return of Gigi Dolan <laughs> on the show. How how what do you a, like that? What a um, fucking segue. <laughs> No, but that was cool. So, like, we've been – so, obviously, we had Gigi on uh, when she was married to Darby Allen uh, as Priscilla Kelly. Uh, that was, like – we became fast friends with with that whole crew after we had him on in February of 2020. And uh, since then, Gigi had uh, started her career over in WWE. And as we've talked about, it's, a, it's not the easiest to get uh, – WWE stars, they they, yeah. they are under contract and they have uh, certain things they need to get clearance on. So we had been talking over the years and waiting until it happened. And then 
you know, lo and behold, Gigi hits me up while we're on tour and says, hey, I got the I got the green light. Let's do an episode. So we, we were able to do that, which was really cool. Because at the time, Becky Lynch was the NXT champion. That's right. It was a yeah. really cool time. It was like while the iron was hot. It was really cool. And since then, congratulations, Gigi, uh, Priscilla. Yep. Um, uh, she's engaged to Zachary Wentz. Um, wish nothing but the best to the, to the pair of them. So congratulations. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that was a guest. (laughs) Oh, you didn't have anything leading out of that. No, I was hoping you guys would take that one. (laughs) I wasn't ready to go back into guests. I got to pull the list up and see who who actually Dude, There's a lot of people, man. Yeah. So I'm looking at, we we were popping. What is, I'm looking at old episodes. (laughs) This is a incarnation and titty milk. Oh, that was uh, that, what is titty milk? <laughs> that you're looking at the podcast. You're not looking at the that yeah. Was I'm just, just looking audio at episode, only. Yeah, but I'm like, what the fuck was that one? <laughs> give it a there listen. There was a story. You go give it, it a is. listen. There was a story. You weren't you weren't a part of that one. It was just me and Brando, um, talking some shit. And uh, okay. there was a story of a strip club. Yeah, it's a place in Mansfield, Ohio. Well, maybe right outside of Mansfield, Ohio, called the Top Hat. It's a strip club connected to a wrestling school run by a pro wrestler dude go there okay check I that will. place out that's like did you give that title to that episode or did i i probably did yeah you probably did yeah, i probably good. did it was, <laughs> it was definitely after a night at the top hat where i had maybe a few too many drinks maybe played a little too much creed on the jukebox but hey we had fun Ooh, creed yeah yeah dude i mean that was <laughs> that was last season but we still bring it up having miles and uh you know have, have, have not miles uh i'm Jamali. sorry yeah, what's that? Mark Chimani. Mark, that's right. Yeah, having Mark on, and then like we talked about a Creed reunion when Mark was on there, and it was like still like a rumor. And then like you know, last year obviously it's cats out of the bag. Creed's coming back and stuff, so that's 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 pretty cool. Dude, I want. I'm excited. Mark, Mark needs to step in because I don't know if you guys have heard. Michael Bublé is no longer Michael Bublé. Have you guys heard this? I'm no. sorry. What? What? He is Mike Buble, and he is no longer the crooner singer Christmas guy that everybody knows him. His kid, I guess, had uh, he's got four kids, and his, <clears throat> one of his kids at ten had uh, I want to say kidney cancer. And they kind of oh, made him reassess life, and I think he's made all the money he really needs. So now he's actually got a whiskey or a bourbon or something he's doing, but he's he's now going by Mike Buble, and so. Mark needs to come fill in those shoes as the Christmas crooner. He absolutely could because when he did when oh he my God, was yeah. singing Sinatra, yeah. it was sick. But actually, like more so, you should talk to Mike Buble and like oh, them together would be them and together the rock mix. Be, yeah, yeah, that would be something. That would be something cool, man. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even. That could be this really is off cool. the top of the head because it's the first I've heard of it. But like, if they came together and did something, it might. You got to watch this video of the Foo Fighters on stage if you haven't seen it and they like oh we're going to call someone up from the audience we need a fan or something and some guys holding up a sign They're like hey you 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 look like a fan they pull up and it's Michael Bublé and then they <laughs> they sing Jeez. like they sing a, a Foo Fighters song together I was like dude that's pretty badass that's and I read you know what I think I have seen clips of that yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I read that like the Deftones are one of his favorite bands so I think it, maybe if you could just change his style a little bit that could be kind of kind of not cool. even change his style I, I i don't think you change that style that's like asking sinatra to sing in a yeah. different different style like i, I don't know and honestly i get that he's sick of it but it's like one of those things like hey we all get we get sick of doing the podcast you just want to take a break but you still want to I come don't get back sick of to it. it i don't know what you're talking i know about. we know you don't <laughs> <laughs> and honestly no like, but i mean honestly but you know what i mean you need a break i think he just needs a break yeah, and then he'll he'll get that fever. Well, and be like, because he made such a an amazing Christmas album is what really and oh, he's getting the best. Of that it's the, yeah. but he's he's amazing outside of that. If you listen to Buble outside of that, he's still oh, yeah. amazing and he's funny. And, he's he's a personality. I mean, yeah. the, that guy's got it all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I you know when I was younger, I was skeptic because I was a huge Sinatra fan. They're like, oh, he's like the new Sinatra. He's like this. And the, you know, they do all the comparisons, and unfortunately. The comparisons made me think a certain way, right? Um, as they tend to do. And, but then when I actually started listening to him, <laughs> this motherfucker's good. Like, oh, yeah, he's great. There's no denying it. He's good. It'd be interesting to see what Mike 
has coming in 2024 then. No? Yeah. Let's see. And see. We, so should, we, should, we should cut him on the horn. Ask him a couple questions. I would love to. That'd be awesome. <laughs> we need a one sheet. You got that, Brandon? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, his, it's his background right now. <laughs> uh, it's getting there. It's a, te- it's a team effort. Uh, so the other one that uh, Joey and Steven of Are You Kidding TV, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They came on. We had the, their first podcast uh, yeah. they'd done. And then you, didn't they come out this year? Yeah, Long they came Street. out in, Nash- in Nashville where they're where they're located. Yeah, they came nice. out to the Nashville show and I got to hang out with them in person and stuff. And dude, uh is it Joey or Steven? Which one's uh the one with the beard? Joey's the one, I believe. Yeah. He reminds me of Brando so much. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like everything about him just like reminds me of Brando. I was like, Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're you're a Brando, I get it. Did, never mind. I was gonna say something. I'm not gonna say it. No, say it. Say it. You're on. No, you're, on like, you're on. You're on camera, bro. Say how does Dick taste though? <laughs> <laughs> A little salty. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Speaking shit. of uh, that kind of talk, we had uh, your your friend Matt uh, Light on. And uh, he had a pretty successful uh, man. It looked like a big event. I did when he talked about the event. I didn't realize the ugly sweater event he has. That's a big yeah, thing. dude. Yeah, Stage AE is like a one of the larger venues in Pittsburgh where you know we have acts coming through. Like saw asking Alexandria and a uh, tray there fucking earlier last year. Mm. Yeah, have I you mean, talking about since I, the the devil's been revealed. I haven't. I haven't. Oh, I know. Yeah, I need yeah, to. Yeah, I need yeah, to he thought it was Brett, that. but it was. Someone yeah. else in our house. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good call there, Sam. <laughs> hey, Sham pulled one out. Sham pulled one out. <laughs> Not too shabby there, bud. <laughs> but uh in the locker room. We've had a lot <laughs> we've had a lot of cool comedians on. Like, you know, Matt's a comedian. Oh. Ari Shafir was that that was a fun episode. That I was a really that fun one. episode. Guys, Dude, for me as a fan, that I love that whole couch. Co- I mean, we talked for a long time. I mean, he was getting a whole couch moved in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, what do you What do you call those couches that turn into beds? Uh, futon. Futon. Yeah. <laughs> They're all pretty sure it was a futon. <laughs> After getting to know him a little bit, I'm like, that wasn't the couch. That was a fucking futon. <laughs> that, he's that coming was in February. One. We got to see him before you go. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. He's coming out. I, I, I texted with him. It's January. It's it's yeah. it's actually like. Maybe this week we got to look at it again. He's he's in. uh, We should look it up right now while we're talking about it, so we can prop out that you're neither one of you are doing it. But uh, we should because I can't. One one of us should grab our phone. Uh, It's not me uh, (laughs) to see when (laughs) he's going to be here. Okay, I guess I'm elected. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck man. He's. I think it was early January, and he's he's got a comedy show here in L.A. And he invited us up to go, so we should probably look at what it was. I think definitely it's like improv or something. And definitely, is it even closer? Prank war. Mm-hmm. You got to start a prank war with Ari. I do not want to start a prank war with Ari. I, I I've I already decided. See. Like it would be so bad. It would be so bad. I've had I ideas and I've given it. And he, he says he won't. I think well, he should. I, think I he mean, should. that's no. it's that's friendship. You know. I agree, and I do, and I do like Ari. Ari's a cool dude, and yeah. uh, I would consider it. But I'm just, I'm very You're scared. <laughs> scared. You're scared. I'm not scared. It's more. I don't know if I. I've kind of gotten past the point in my life of Molly, like that's just not really my jam anymore. Like acid, I could fuck with some other things. How do you feel about shit? You're just worried about Molly. dosing. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm thinking about. Is like how how is how am I going to get dosed, and when is it going to happen? Like I love how you're worried about dosing. I'd be worrying about shit all yeah. in my bedroom. Or under oh, my I don't give a fuck about that. Oh, if it's if it's shit wars, I fucking win that thing every time. I don't give a fuck. I got no I got no qualms. It, uh, January tenth, January tenth. There you go. And go buy tickets. There's only ten left, people. Where's Where's oh. he at? He's at the Brea Improv. There Brea you go. Improv. All right. Well, we're going. We're gonna go. We're. I'll hit him up. We'll go. Cool. Ari was like really cool. And for all the, as we talked about on that episode, for all the shit he gets to, again, Twitter universe and everything like that, like the dude is not a, he's not a bad guy. He's just a, he's a, he's a joke maker. Like, yeah. He just but, says what comes to his mind. Yeah. Like a lot of people yeah. just use that filter of, yeah, I know I'm a horrible person, but I won't say it. He just yeah. says it. So, yeah. And that's another what one of a my comedian's favorites. supposed to do. Like that, Big J Okerson. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Big J. They go hand in hand. Like, Another great guest. I love some of the stories on there, man. That was a good episode. Another one that 
fuck, I wish I was on. I wish you were on that one too. <laughs> you um, missed both of the ones. I know, <laughs> I know. And those are both great episodes. I'm like, man, <laughs> fuck. Big J used to have a show on this fucking shitty ass network called Cecil TV. It was called Big J Okerson's What's Your Fucking Deal. And it was just comedians up there doing like stand up and crowd work. And it was so much fucking fun, dude. And I wish that someone would buy the rights to it and put it out there. He's, his style is rad of like he just comes with he just looks so nonchalant and then he just fucking crushes yeah and i just i love anyone who does crowd work i feel like that's such a next level of not reciting a bit and yeah. a show it's like no you have the funny because you can make whatever is in front you of know you what though that that's a great point and i know it wasn't this season it was last season that we're talking about but like uh uh jeremiah watkins Oh, yeah. is mm-hmm. great at that too oh, he's, and he's yeah. since since we've had him on and everything i've I've seen what he what he's been putting out and everything like dude that's uh stand up on the spot that he does at the comedy store is growing it's doing really well like it's, oh no what a nice guy like if anyone there's you know that he works with everybody and we've talked about it before any job you work with people hire or work with good people that you know obviously work hard but also are fun to work with and you can tell people just enjoy him and he's reliable and yeah he's yeah he was, he was, i feel uh, like he cut his hair and then everything got better for him like <laughs> you know what i mean it's like, <laughs> that is true dude that haircut before but <laughs> yeah. i guess it wasn't working <laughs> yeah i don't know it was his style but yeah, yeah. hey who else we did we have? oh you know yeah. speaking of comedians and actors we we stepped into something really cool this year guys yes fred, fred armison dude dude taron Killam. yeah snl alumni Yep. And fucking huge. just rad people. Like, whoa, that was cool. That was, that, those were some good pulls. Well, with the uh, Fred one, I think we all, we laid heavily into the music side thinking, ah, he talks about Saturday Night Live all the time. He doesn't want to talk about that. He'll mm-hmm. get sick. And he talked about music and, and stuff, but I was shocked how much he lit up more with the Saturday Night Live thing. I think because we were talking about music and Saturday Night Live, it was like the blending of the two really mm-hmm. made him. But the fact that we had a, snl guy do an impression in front of us was dude one of the so freaking good. bucket list things for me like i didn't even know it was on my bucket list and that was awesome so dude yeah having fred on was obviously amazing he's such a sweetheart that guy like everything you hear about him is for a reason there's a there's the rumor is out fred is a good person <laughs> like, oh, i love how he says to you he goes yeah i'll come to your show but will you even talk to me it's like are you fucking kidding what? yeah like, no dude i'm gonna put you in the nosebleeds like, what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> yeah, <dude>. will you <laughs> talk to me on my show that's more like yeah yeah. yeah and then no, taryn and, was just a fucking and then taryn sweetheart. coming over to the house with his brother that was oh, another that was cool sweet. moment man that, like i didn't know his brother was that big of a fan you know he came here yeah, you know, I'm I'm in the office right now in the studio where I got all my bases hanging up and stuff, and he got to play a bass and stuff, and and then Taryn was just so cool. I, I text him every once in a while. He he did the spam a lot on Broadway. Um, man, such a such a another really good person, and like uh, the funny part to me having Taryn was when he was tell, talking about how he just started drinking, and he went straight to bourbon. Like he didn't like it was like. He's like, no, I didn't drink before, but I started, when I started drinking, I started drinking bourbon. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's, a solid, that's a solid move. But fucking Sam over here still can't fucking drink bourbon, you know? like, No, definitely not. <laughs> Fuck, I won't. But the weird thing about Taryn, too, is I had hit him up like three years ago. Like, so before I really knew what I was doing, and I like solicited this thing on Instagram just with a direct message. It was just weird, a weird one off. And then made i made a fred arbison action figure and he found me through that and went to my his dms and then he's like dude sorry it's been three years better late than never my brother <laughs> is a huge event sevenfold fan and i was like oh shit and it was just kind of like right it was the right time you know for all, all to happen and and just being able to surprise his brother that was kind of fun with yeah. a happy birthday and to have him over the house man i like it was that's one of those like surreal moments i guess but you know, it's just it's just cool at this point uh, through this podcast that I've had to like, I've had people that I'm fans of over over to the house, you know, and that's just, I mean, you can't trade that for anything in the world, right? I've watched Taryn on SNL. I mean, me and me and the wife have recorded SNL for the last fifteen years, so I've seen every episode and every skit that 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 they put out of him, and I was just 
he was one of, he undoubtedly was one of the one of the ones during his cast time that I was like he's he's an outstander like he's, oh he was in every he was in all the bit like he didn't have as many like straight recurring like this is his mm-hmm. character that he had but he was consistently in every single one that you've seen he's, he's very versatile and yeah. then dude his his Benjamin Franklin thing uh, oh um, yeah <laughs> oh my god next god that was like i would i would die laughing on uh, on that one dude it was so good uh, and he's but so that was a couple a couple of really cool moments there for sure to have have uh those those, those guys on and yeah. then after uh another cool one that i thought was cool uh was having the co-defendants on after they oh, yeah. played with us at the forum um you know we've had mike on the show before but i will say that was a different we had mike on when he was sober before when it was a one-on-one conversation and then he was i don't think he was sober i don't know but <laughs> he didn't seem very sober in that second episode he was in a, in a very entertaining form i will say that <laughs> yeah, was all, he was in a speedo jumping in the fucking pool in the Not back it's fidel underwear oh that's right it, it was it was his, his underwear line it was yeah. his underwear line i, I forgot yeah and he peed off the side <laughs> and yeah fuck man it's that just was like a, fun a party episode. of an episode yeah, well, those guys have party. such a crazy backstory too. I mean, their their lyrics fucking don't lie. That's like no. some intense lyrics. They're not lyrics. they're not playing around, dude. I remember when when Mike sent me that like in 2022, he sent me the Code Defendants before it released in 2023. And uh I was like, "Dude, this shit's awesome. Like, do you want to talk about it or anything like that?" He's like, "I don't know. Like some of these guys are 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 uh, under uh, federal investigation right now, <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And I was like, "All right, man. Well, fucking music's good. I don't know what you, he's like. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet either. Because obviously, he's got fat records. He's got uh, uh, bottles to the ground. He's got he's got you know he could put out anything at this point, and uh, he he wasn't sure how he was gonna release it. And I th- I think they did a great job of this underground way of of releasing the co defendants because it's it's a sneaky record, dude. It's a really good record. And like I put it, you know, we do our Avenge Sevenfold top five albums. And I put it in, in there for me because honestly, it's a top five album of 2023 to me. Like there's there's no denying it. I mean, there's so many honorable mentions though. Like when I come down to like five, I'm like, oh fuck, I got to narrow hard. it down. It's like, <laughs> hard, man. Would you, you put it number one? Pretty close though. I Well, we didn't, we don't. So we stopped a few years ago. We stopped doing it in rankings of one through five because it's so hard to even it's get hard, the five. Yeah. Right, yeah. So it's like after that, it's like fuck that. Like just here's my five favorites, I guess this year, you know. Um, Fair. But yeah, no, I had a uh, hundred Gex, of course. Yeah, I think band. all of uh, everyone in the band had a hundred Gex on there because that rec- that record is just amazing. Yeah. Um, some guys had Poppy, which I was honorable mention on me for sure. I love the Poppy record. Um, what else did we have? Uh, like I said, Codefendants. Uh, oh, another guest that we had. White Reaper. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, Along for the Ride uh, is an amazing record of 2023. I love no, uh, that. Shout record. out to uh, Ryan for coming on the show. That was awesome. Yep. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh, I met a couple of the guys too, and we were in uh, Sacktown. Nice. Or was it when I was out? I don't remember. So basically, there's two Danny Wimmer festivals at each of you were at at different times. There was a Sacramento one, and then there was the uh, Louisville one. Right. And I can't remember which one I said hi to them at. They came back to our compound, and I said hi to a couple of the guys. I think it was Sacramento. I, don't remember. I think it was, it was Sacramento. Sacramento. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't there. But... Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're going to say that, because I don't remember doing it. So. <laughs> but I do I do remember at the Louisville Festival having a fun moment with another guest from this season, Danny Warsnop. Uh, oh, yeah. Home. He brought his tequila. He brought his <laughs> – yeah, he brought his tequila. <laughs> Danny was in good form. <laughs> he was in great form. Man, he would fit in in Newcastle so well. <laughs> is so that well. that that's the gauge now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right soon. <laughs> fit right in. <laughs> Newcastle local. That was fun seeing Danny though after because we recorded the episode and put it out like I don't know, maybe a month before, and then I saw him. And it was it was really fun. Because you know, we're old friends. We'd we we done tours with Asking Alexandria before and stuff and you know, we've had Danny on the show. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just, it was really fun seeing him. I, it, he, he told me a few things too. That I didn't realize, I didn't realize that like Ben isn't in the touring with them anymore. He's just at home writing and 
they're putting it out there. And I was like, oh, okay. And I, I didn't realize that. It was interesting, but, you know, whatever works for them, you know. Yeah. It, they got a great record, too. That was another honorable mention. Asking Alexandria's record, I mean, especially the one we talked about with, with Danny, um, the one that, like, he wasn't sure was supposed to be an, uh, an asking song, the last song on the record. And I was like, that was the one that stood out to me. You yeah. Know? And then Kim Dracula. Kim Dracula, yes. On your list. We had, uh, yeah, we had Barbie yep. and Wellen. Yeah. Yep. I got to so meet Bar- that. Well, Barbie to... wasn't exactly part. She's part of uh, the Kim Dracula camp because she was out there while we were on tour. And but she has her own boxing and and uh, TikTok career going on there. And she's fucking awesome. She's just such a sweetheart too. She really is. Like it's, I loved when I asked them if they wanted to be on the podcast. It was like over drinks after a show and stuff. You know, it was just like, hey, if you want to come, you know, whatever. And then we did two. We did the two legs of the tour totaling you know eight weeks and at some point i was like yeah this is this is awesome like you, you guys want to hang out and like we we became friends and stuff and they're i'm such a big fan of their camp like they're just doing it their way and having a good time with it and i just i'm just a fan like uh, everything about the music too talking to wellen about how they produced the that record it's their first record it's the first kim dracula record and to have have him explain where he and his brother had came had came from to that point and building it all up social media before and then now to take it out on the road and the, I mean after that like fucking super props to them they're they're gonna be out li- with Limp Biscuit they got a bunch of really rough they? festivals next year yeah I didn't know they've that. got some they got some touring coming up in twenty twenty four well that's they're, weird they're, because at, at aftershock. We all watched Fred go up and give him a high five like they had just met for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that and that's Cam and and, and you know and uh, he he he's awesome too. They, I'm sorry, I got to get the pronouns right. They, whatever, they are awesome, uh, and he's he's such a sweetheart. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say why he can't he didn't want to come on the podcast yet, but it, it might happen down the road. Let's put it that way, like actually have cool. cam um but yeah man having them on that and that was fun too i did both those episodes in salt lake city like before sound check <laughs> i remember it like like the next day i flew to seattle to see darby uh headline the pay-per-view um and i was in salt lake doing that one with them and uh man i i i gotta text them again because like we texted back and forth since we've been home with a couple of the guys in that camp and they're just they gave me a really nice like card and stuff and I don't know. Anyways. I, I'm 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 going off a rail here that like I can't explain the behind the scenes on so <laughs> Well we we got a, another old uh, friend at the beginning of the year. I w- remember we were taking it I was in Hawaii and uh uh or maybe maybe it was released uh the guys from uh Hollywood and Dead. I was like, dude, that's a great story, old man. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Hollywood and Dead. There was a lot of yeah, 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 interesting yeah, yeah. stories Giant that came tears. from that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah, guys yeah. were hilarious. That was dude, cool three tears. I said two tears. Uh, uh, yeah, dude, that was a fun. I'm glad you brought that. I've forgotten about that. That was fun because that was another blast from the past for me. Where it was like, you know, we toured with those guys in 2013, um, and they were awesome. Then we became fast friends then, and then catching up with them and seeing what they're up to now. And again, uh, I'm glad you did that off of Kim Dracula because Kim Dracula is doing it now where they're coming off of social media and becoming a, a, a viable act. I mean, uh, these guys were kind of the first to do that. They were a MySpace band that actually signed to MySpace records. And then they got a gold record off of it. You know, like this was like, they were kind of the OGs on that. It was really interesting to like hear their perspective on uh, what's changed over, you know, the 15 year career that they've had. It's weird to think about that time period was definitely the era of masks because they wore masks. Slipknot came out around that time. No, what? Slipknot was way before Sam. You're way Sham. before? Way, way before? before? Sham. Sham. Stop. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're like 99. Slipknot was? Yeah. Yes. And when was when was Hollywood Undead? Two thousand one? No. 
I don't think so, dude. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Not even close. Sham, my, uh, sham, sham. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to look it up now just to prove you wrong. Yeah, yeah. you got it. Uh, they might have formed then or whatever, nah, but like their popularity formed, didn't come until the, the late 2000. Formed like, in 05. 2005. Yeah. They formed in 05 by the time yeah. they were. And even shut your. Any, okay. You're probably looking at whatever. like 0809. Yeah, you're seven. looking at 0809 when they were starting to like yeah. be something. Yeah. You were close. Right. You're only 10 years off. Yeah. <laughs> Sham. All right. About bands that, that I do know more of, like 311, we had Peanut on. That was Oh, that, that was so sick. Very cool. I and I just saw them at Almost Acoustic, and they fucking blew the roof off the place. They are the best live show. If you haven't, I, John, you haven't seen it. Have, Brandon, have you ever seen them? Yet. I've never, never seen oh, them. Oh, you got to. They put on an amazing show. I'm going to make sure because, dude, and, you know, I've loved 311's music for so many years. I mean, I, I said on the episode, like, when uh, that 311 Down album came out, I was in middle school, and it was, like, it was the album of the summer here in Huntington Beach. It, it just really was. And, uh, you know, as a bassist to a bassist, and, and I listened to him and I transcribed his stuff, and to have him come on the show, and to be such a good dude, like, that's the other yeah. thing, too. Like, like the old adage, don't meet your heroes. Dude, I'm here to tell you on this show, fucking meet your heroes because i'm i'm meeting a lot of my heroes on this fucking show and they tend to be pretty fucking awesome like yeah. dude peanut was so cool um uh his backstory his his musical uh, uh uh journey that he's been on through jazz and everything like me and him i we hit it off like right away i was just like dude this is why this is why i looked up to you this makes sense you know the fact I'm they haven't been to europe happened. too blew my mind yeah, yeah no. oh, that's they, a bad man. I told my wife, and she's like, "Well, that sounds like they had really shitty management before." I was like, "Yeah, that seems like well, a well, yes, yes, and no." I will say that that was a. Uh, they came from the the '90s, and I'll tell you, through through like the 2000s, even, it was not a foregone conclusion that you can just go over to Europe and play. Like really? we had to force it. We forced it in our career. Well, I feel so like the there was a lot of bands like that we that. would talk to that never did Europe, never did Europe. So it's like yes. They didn't have the foresight to to go for it through management, but it, it wasn't. That was kind of the that was kind of the way. It was a the risk. Time. Okay. Yeah. yeah so it doesn't surprise me all that much. But now that everything's so global, like they, they gotta go, they gotta go do something there. They gotta. Like I would be hard pressed to believe that there's not a good fan base for them there. Yeah. Um. Oh, speaking of heroes, though, we also did have Dave Elveson on the show. Yeah. Another ba another bassist that I looked up to and transcribed everything. Got to meet on the road when we were in Phoenix, and he came on the show, and uh, it was so fun chatting with him. I did I did wish that we could have got because he's sitting there with his bass the whole time, not the <laughs> whole time, but like a a, 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 good, a good amount of the of the conversation. And he's showing me these riffs that I've transcribed as when I was twelve years old. And I'm like, this is fucking awesome. I know what you're doing, but it wasn't you couldn't hear it coming through because that's not how zoom works i guess <laughs> <laughs> but he was just like plucking away man it was fucking cool yeah it was really cool to see him plucking away and like and if you're a bassist or a musician you can see what he's doing and you know what he's doing but like it was just so funny to me because i was just like every time I'm like you know i can't hear that right <laughs> <laughs> but he's become a good friend too i text it we text uh every so often every other week or whatever and he's he's another just genuinely good guy who again i'll say it. we 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 talked a little bit about his transgressions or whatever the fuck you want to call it but um yeah man that's another one that's proven like guilty until proven innocent and he gets kicked out of megadeth over you know nonsense online you know and it's like i didn't like that because again when you read the once you go in and dig in the facts and this isn't just me being like a homer like, go dig in the facts if you don't believe me. The dude was doing something, you know, that's maybe morally not okay. But is that grounds to be dismissed and canceled? I don't think so. You go read what, what he actually did. And yeah, sure. If you have a moral issue with it, I get it. Like, everyone's moral compass is their own. But I just don't think that there's any grounds for him to just, like, be canceled. I don't think it was bad timing. Honestly. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I 
<laughs> I could see by your faces, you're like, I'm not going to chime in on that. Yeah. You fucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I don't really know. Uh, yeah, it, it, it seemed like, I mean, everything was just and legal, so what's the big deal? It sounds like there's some personalities in that band, though. I think, I think there's, yeah, there, I think there's something what, else going uh, yeah, on. Yeah, I think sure. that was just... But yeah, no, the, it was, it, it's been a great season of just, you know, again, like I said, doing this for all of us, I, I'll speak for you guys right now too. It's just fun, man. Like that's what we're doing. Like, it's just like, we get to meet new people, people that we've been fans of for a long time, maybe people that we're just being introduced to, you know? And I hope that that's what our listeners are getting from it too, to be honest. Like I was yeah. talking to, again, in our VC uh, discord chat. Uh, for all the filthy animal members, um, I was talking to them and I was just like, a couple of them like mentioned, they're like, I'm so glad that you have people I've never heard of before on the show. And I'm like, thank you. That's the fucking point. Maybe yeah. I'm opening a little, I'm not, uh, you know, nothing crazy here, but like, these are things that I'm interested in. Maybe you might be too, you know, like, and be open to it. Like, just yeah. because you see a name that you don't know, like, so, <laughs> Some people we've had before, like, oh, why would I listen to that? I don't know who that is. It's like, because you might get to know who that is. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's Niece the is, is the perfect example of that. We were like, I don't even know what we're going to talk to this girl about. And we learned yeah. all about her life. That was one of the best episodes we've had. Informative and... Yeah. yeah. And speaking of, there's a foundation now that I re, uh, yeah. I reposted about on my Instagram. And, and I know Peace we from did Peace from Niece, on... I think it is. Yep. Yeah. Peace from yeah. Niece. Peace from Niece. Yeah. And... uh uh, again, I'll say it right here. Just my heart goes out to their everyone that was affected in their family and friend group. There, you know, that's that's brutal. But hopefully, you know, as I guess some of the underlying theme here is this internet culture that we've been talking about today. I think that I, if I had to venture a guess, it definitely played a part in uh, her demise. And I think that's that's the important part to realize that like. Yeah, you're having fun and you're being a fucking shitty little kid or just a shitty adult, whatever it is that you think you're anonymous about. But it affects people, and yeah. that, and that's just that's not cool. There's it's the, real people, man. You're talking about real, real people. people. You're talking about emotions. it's not just a fucking picture on a fucking screen. Yeah. These are yeah. real fucking people living their lives just like you are. They're finding their own way. None of us know what way is right. No one does. There's no fucking way you do. You don't live long enough to know. So you just try your best and. To fucking come at somebody, and to that point, that's that that's the toxicity of that whole culture that I just I want nothing to do with. So yeah. in the new year, to put a bow on this, because Brandon and I are texting and you're not seeing it. <laughs> I'm not. Like I'm five, not <laughs> fuck you guys! Like I could feel it going off. Ago. All right, yeah, I'm getting texted by my wife too. We're like, we got to wrap it up for the family. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wrap it up for the family. How are you going to make more? Uh, I don't want any more. You're the uh, one that wanted more. We <laughs> had that good talk. Brando's got another one coming for sure. I, I guarantee you he's going to have multiple. Not There's yet. no way. We got time. <laughs> Dude, yes, look, but, I don't, <laughs> my beard doesn't look like yours yet. Not so, yet. Not yet. One more kid. Oh, yeah. It'll put you over the edge, bro. Don't worry. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I love you guys. We're going to have a great new year together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely here's to 2024 everyone uh look forward to seeing more of you guys and having fun out on the road and doing this podcast as we have so much fun together with these three stooges just talking shit again we're just having fun fucking take it for what it is follow subscribe or don't and maybe leave a comment and tell us why we're fucking dumb um but it or tell us that we're doing a good no. job we're Everybody spreading more positivity yeah you just said don't do the the culture, right. the i just said not to do that yeah yeah, yeah. No, no, let us know that we're fucking awesome because yeah. we know thank we you are. <laughs> do more of the things we're better you than you year. and you know it um yeah. <laughs> no but seriously uh thank you guys so much uh for 2023 all the views all the listens all the follows all the comments keep them coming in 2024 we really do appreciate them it makes us know that what we're doing isn't just for us, and uh, that that's fantastic. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun, and we'll do it just for us, but it's nice to know somebody else is checking it out, too. So uh, very much appreciate you guys. Happy 2024. We'll see you next week, as always. Till next time. Cheers. <laughs>